Hello viewers, here is a set of Panasonic Deck 6 cordless telephones. This is the model number KXTG9343. It came with the manual and it came with the quick setup guide, which is something I've never seen before, this quick setup guide. It's kind of interesting. It seems like it's pretty brief. It's all just in different languages. This is what I would consider to be a pretty iconic set of telephones as far as Panasonic is concerned. When these came out, I mean, they sold like crazy. In the peak, I remember seeing these all over the place. You could see them. At, well, I saw them at a lot of people's houses. They were at stores restaurants, and they were everywhere. And they were good phones. I mean, the only thing I could think of that really wasn't too good was the batteries. I mean, they were less than not too good. They were pretty bad on the batteries. I was given a set very similar to this. It was the one that had the answering machine. It had four handsets, and it was one of the very early phones that I had in my collection. That was when I really started to collect phones in the... I don't know, early 2010, somewhere in that range. Maybe a little bit after, maybe mid mid 2010s. Early to mid, probably. Anyways, so I was given a set of these around that time, and because I didn't have a whole lot of phones at the time, I set these up and I used them for years. And I, I used them pretty heavily. And I remember having a lot of problems with the batteries. Of course, when I got them, they were used, and the batteries were, were spoiled at that point. And I had replaced them numerous times over the course uh, of the time that I was using them heavily. And it was a problem because it wasn't like the talk time would just get reduced. It, it was more so that they would become unreliable. And so at any given point, they would just blank out, even if the battery icon was, was displaying full. And that was pretty bad because, I mean, you can work with a talk time that's decreased. You just keep an eye on the battery icon and, and switch to a different phone when it gets low. But when it blanks out unpredictably like that, it was bad. So I had to keep changing the batteries often. I don't think that they could be in there for even half of a year before they developed the issue. And um, the other problem, too, was that the talk time, it's not that long to begin with. I think, uh, we'll take a look in the manual and see what it claims. I'm pretty sure it claims three hours tops on speakerphone. Let's see here. Talk time, talk time. Here we go, battery. Oh, and continue, yeah, here we go. So this says, uh, Hopefully it's not the triangle vid. Oh no! So this says uh, in continuous use, five hours max, not in use, eleven days standby. But then it says while using the clarity booster is only three hours. And if I'm outside, using the you know it farther away from the base, it's going to be on boost. And then on speakerphone, it's going to be even less. So this claim three hours tops. I didn't usually get three hours out of it. I would say it was like maybe two and a half because, you know, like on, on a summer day if I'm using the phone a lot, I, I can go through an hour or two in a day and I would usually only get a day or so a charge out of these. If they didn't make it on the charger every night, it would, it would give out sometime the next day. So the batteries really kind of stunk in these. And I, I almost wonder if people kind of just ignore that because they used AAA cells, which nowadays are significantly more expensive than the, you know, one of the pre-baked packs, which are, of course, readily available on multiple different online retailers now. But I think people kind of ignore the battery issue because they thought it was great that they could buy AAA batteries and put them in. And, I mean, in 2010... I forget what year this came out, but somewhere around there, Amazon was kicking by then, and you could get the batteries on Amazon for relatively cheap. So, I'm not really sure why that was such a big selling point at the time. 
to me it's irrelevant now. So anyways, I like these phones. They bring back a lot of good times. What a summer memory is talking on these on the phone at night. So I think I paid five dollars for this, said it was worth getting it. I have found though that these tend to hold their value and they can resell for quite a bit of money if you find the right buyer and you got a bigger set of them. These aren't in too bad a condition. This one's the worst. It's missing the um, the headphone thing. It's pretty dirty. These aren't too bad. These do have the talking caller ID. And it also has the digital answering system. No, new messages. Old message, play. Okay, so there's some messages on there. I will go ahead and play those messages uh, onto the video here, and I'll skip them for now to a separate video for the messages. There weren't really any interesting things on the answering machine. Sometimes you get these phones and the answering machine is a total time capsule and it's got some really cool messages on there talking about stuff from a decade or two ago. But this, these messages weren't that interesting. I don't think I'm going to even post them. Anyway, so let's delete all those messages out of here. To erase all messages, press erase again. No messages. Answer sent. Hello, we are not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the beep. We will return your call. Okay, let's go ahead and call these telephones up and see how they're working. kind of unusual somebody changed the ring I never liked that the, the uh, melodies in here I thought they sound very shrill and tacky already on tone one. I'm gonna take a look at the call log here. Let's see how many calls these got. Oh they got quite a few calls every day. Okay so these these received quite a few calls. Uh, can't see how many calls they made out because there's no timing uh, associated with the redial. Okay, let's add an entry into the phone. Oh, there's the entries in the phone book, too. What's this? <laughs> what a weirdo. I'm going to delete all these out of here. I don't know if there's a way to delete all of them at once. I don't think there is. Jeez. Nah. I think 
at it, delete each one individually. Okay, I deleted all the old entries, so let's call again and the ring shouldn't be on that obnoxious tone anymore. Okay, let's turn the answering machine on. It's on. Okay, let's take a look at the settings on the answering machine. No messages. How do you change the settings? had quite a few features to them. I don't know how to turn the call screening off. I think the screening will go through each handset, which I certainly don't want it to do. We're going to have a feedback freak show. I don't see any such setting for it. Let's see what happens. I think we're going to get a feedback freak show. There's no way to turn that off. Maybe there just isn't. I don't know. I can't remember how it worked. I mean, I never heard the answer machine, you know, when I was using it, because the only time the answer machine picks up is when I'm not here. So, I don't remember how it worked. And normally I don't really care. I'm only caring because it's going to have the feedback on the video. So I'll just lower that all the way down. And uh, we'll call again. Try to record a message without the feedback freak show. Call from the Triangle Vid. Call from the Triangle 
a test of the Panasonic Digitane answering system. One, two, three, four, five, six, over and out. the other message. One new message. This is a test of the Panasonic Digitane answering system. One, two, three, four, five, six, over and out. Sunday, 12, 10 a.m. End of final message. Yeah, something's not right with this answering machine. No, no. All message play back. Well, how come I saying there's no messages now? No, new messages. All message play back. This is going to be a major feedback freak show because it's called screening. I don't really want it to be. I think it does call screen to each of the handsets. Uh, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't sound like it is. No, I guess it's not. Feedback, feedback, one, two, three. Sunday, 12.08 a.m. This is a end of final message. To erase all messages, press erase again. No messages. The speaker sounds a little strange. I wonder if it's on its way out. All right, let's record a greeting. I'm not sure if I can do this through the answer uh, through the handset here. I don't think so. I have to do it on the bass. To record greeting, press. Record again. Hello, you're going to have to record a message because I can't answer the call because all the batteries are out of charge in the handsets.
The call clarity of the outgoing message is pretty clear, but I think the incoming message recording is very average, if not a little bit below average. It's typical four digit tan quality. of the outgoing message is pretty clear, but I think the incoming message recording is very average, if not a little bit below average. It's typical four to Japan quality. Sunday, 12.15 a.m. End of final message. There's definitely something wrong with this answering machine because it's not... Oh, there it goes. I guess it just took some time. Okay, maybe it's fine. It just operates slowly. No new messages. All message played back. The call clarity of the outgoing message is pretty clear, but I think the incoming message recording is very average. It's not a little bit below average. It's typical poor digit hand quality. End of final message. Okay. Let's go to the mains and let's make some calls. Some testing calls. in a mountain stream is after the dance they went straight home the hostess taught the new maid to serve adding fast lead to wrong sums the show was a flop the very start there was water in the cellar after the heavy rain they're not listed in the new phone book a large size in stockings is hard to sell the juice of lemons makes fine punch you sound pretty good smoke poured out of every crack A yacht slid around the point into the bay. The place seems dull and quite stupid. Thieves who rob friends deserve jail. The frosty air passed through the coat. The crooked maze failed to fool the mouse. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's very clear. Okay, so everything sounds pretty good on the incoming side. Now I will call the testing engine machine and record some testing messages. Three new messages and six old messages. Message one. Yes, testing message number one. These telephones have pretty much no side tone, which is one of the things I don't like about them. But there's not a whole lot of things I don't like about them. These are pretty good songs. I'm currently roaming across the room. I am almost as far as I can go. 
and now I am as far as I can go, so if it's still clear over here, then the range is correct. Now, one other comment I'll make about these phones is that I've noticed that the pickup is not the greatest. And I think that was a pretty common trend with a lot of Panasonic's phones prior to the DeX6 era. For what it's worth, Panasonic did seem to fix a lot of issues with their phones in the DeX6 Plus era. Originally, they fixed the battery issues, and they fixed the pickup issues. And then it seemed as time goes on, and you get more towards the more modern equipment that they're making now, they're having problems again. So, in my opinion, the last like, really good Panasonic phones were probably produced around like 2012, 2015, and that's about it. I'm not too happy with the stuff that they've made after that. Okay, now I'm going to switch the phone to a speakerphone. Okay, now it's on the speakerphone, and I'm speaking at about the same volume and distance as I was before. And unlike some of their newer equipment, I don't hear a single iota of feedback as one shouldn't when using a telephone. Okay, now I'm going to put the telephone down on the table, and we're going to see how far away it goes. I don't think it's going to pick up too far away. Now, I just put it up on the table, so I'm speaking at about one foot away, right over it, uh, on the table, and it's start moving back now. This is about three feet away. Four feet away. But message two. Now the unit cut me off, so I think my theory was correct. The pickup is not the greatest on these telephones. This was the second handset. I will go ahead and hang this one up into the base, and then the third message I will hang up using the buttons. Message three. <laughs> End of messages. I think we're having some issues here because the second and the third, or the second telephone at least, seemed to be a lot louder than the first. Let's see here. It's hard to. It's hard to get a, a good idea of how it sounds live like this. Something's not right with this handset. I mean, I'm all the way across the room. It shouldn't be feedback like that much. Okay, this is handset too. And you can hear this handset is much louder. And it's not feeding back. So there is something wrong with that first handset. I don't know if that's going to be... Maybe there was a liquid spill into the handset or something of, of that type, or it's just very, very dirty over the microphone. There's definitely something wrong with it. I think that second handset is working normally, and I'm gonna say that this handset also seems to be working pretty much normally. I can hear myself through the phone okay, and there's not an excessive feedback. So, there's something wrong with the inset number one, that's my conclusion. Alright, so we're going to have to do some repair on the set, perhaps. I mean, the phone is dirty, but I don't think it's that dirty that it would cause a problem. I mean, this phone definitely took some abuse at some point, but I don't know. Well, we'll see what we can do. If nothing else, we've got two good working handsets here. These batteries are only in there for about 20 minutes or so, however long the video was. I put them in right before the video, and they're already hot just from the, those couple of minutes of charging. The charging circuitry in these phones was not good. It charged way too fast, I think.